But let's move to the next one and write down my time here. Ole Miss 29, Texas A&M 19. And I didn't see this one coming. I I did not see it coming at all. Uh, Ole Miss, 504 yards of total offense on that A&M defense. And 247 passing yards, 257 rushing yards, and it was not Matt Corral running the football. Matt Corral had 10 rushing attempts for negative 5 yards. Okay, Ely had 152 yards rushing. Parrish had 58 yards rushing. Snoop Connors, Connor had 55 yards rushing. I just, I, I did not, I, I don't know what to even make of this. My note on this was, is the Ole Miss defense good? Like, I, I, didn't, put, I didn't put down a ton of notes on these. I wanted to kind of just wing it as I go. Uh, but I, I don't understand Ole Miss. Like, I love what Kiffin is doing there. But this defense had been really bad, except they don't give up points. Like, <laughs> that's, I cannot figure, maybe there is something to a defense that just doesn't give up points. Like, it's the bend but don't break mentality. And what DJ Durkin has done with that team is impressive. Now, I will say this. This is the first time in, let's see, it was three years before this where they had a different defensive coordinator every season. And then they did not get an offseason with DJ Durkin last year, really. Right. Now, this year, they get their first continuous defensive coordinator. DJ Durkin was really, really good before he went to Maryland, right? He got the head coaching job because he was a really good defensive coordinator and a really good recruiter. And now he's a down at Ole Miss with Kiffin. He was good at Maryland. Yeah, no, he was He was okay. They were never great on the defensive side of the ball at all. Look at, like, the, look at the talent that they had, Gary. I, you, I understand, you only, but, you only look at numbers and you stop thinking about the guys that are playing football. Look Those at what dudes at Maryland trying to compete against Texas and Oklahoma or Ohio State and and, and and those those big offenses. Are you kidding me? Uh, agreed. Agreed. I don't think DJ Durkin was a great head coach. I think he is a great defensive coordinator and he's showing it again and again, right? Like it's uh, typically the numbers that you put up between the 20s will equate to points typically. But they, week in and week out, they have been able to stop people from scoring once they get down there. And it was the same thing here. I, I Ole just. Ole Miss's problem right now on offense, you asked, are they good? Yes, they're great for what they are and what they have. You're talking about a team that only has two of their starting five offensive linemen. We always give everybody credit for injuries, but nobody seems to be giving Ole Miss credit for what they're doing with the injury problem. They don't have a single skill player starting right now that was a starter week one. Well, uh, so so Drummond came back last night, and he's... Okay, Drummond, Drummond, yeah. Drummond did come back last yeah. night. That's right. Go, going into last night, the last couple of weeks, though, they've been doing it without a single skill player on offense starting and with only two of their five starting offensive linemen. So are there is their offense good? Yes, they're good. They've got one dude that's carrying them in a way that nobody else outside of one other guy, my Malik, is 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 doing it. That's yes. it. It's it it was really and, uh, and they're they're intentionally not running corral right now because of the ankle problems. Yeah. That is that is systematic. The reason it's negative 10 rushing yards is because college football doesn't know it's, how to keep it's stats. The sacks. Yeah. Sack adjusted rushing. So their rushing yards were 257, sack adjusted was 262. So it's you look at what they did in the red zone, 4 out of 6. Texas A&M 3 out of 3 in the red zone. But the issue is they only got into the red zone 3 times. The interceptions certainly hurt Texas A&M late uh, cuz I I thought they had the momentum. I thought they were ready to roll in that fourth quarter, and they did not. They were not. Uh, I was impressed. Ole Miss went over 3 on fourth down, and there were a couple of spots. Uh, I know one specifically where Kiffin went for... So, he he did the field goal attempt, but it was a fake field goal, and did, were you watching this play? Yep. I'm going to talk about... Now, don't get me wrong. I like Ole Miss. I like, I like Texas A&M. I'm not thrown off of either team by this, but the kid looking at the referee and getting pissed that he didn't get the first down and the ref like asking him for the ball and the kid taking the ball and doing it on the other side of him and dropping it in front of the referee really irked me. I was so irritated by that for some reason. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't I don't care. I don't well, know why. You're, you're, anyway. you're talking you're talking about a punter. 
okay, that's never touched the football before in his life outside of when he gets to punt the football or holding the snap. All right. That that kid doesn't know what the hell he's doing to begin with. Yeah. Let's 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 ignore that. Like him making the mistake to not lower his shoulder and try to get any forward progress because he was about inches away from getting it. Like that he's a punter. What what yes. do you expect? The problem is I love going for it. You know that. Like I, I've said it before, the worst thing anybody could ever do is let me call offensive plays or put me at the third base coach at baseball because I'm sending them. I'm sending them every time. I don't care the score. Well, this time I care about the score. They haven't really moved the ball a lot on you. They haven't scored on you at all. And if you kick the field goal, you make it an eight-point game, which means they have to score twice. They have to, A, get the touchdown, which you haven't given up a lot of, and then they have to get the two-point conversion, and that only ties you. Yes. There's no reason to go for it there. Just no reason at all mathematically to go for it there. I can't believe the analytics would tell you to do that. I just don't believe, and I'm the guy that wants to go for it no matter what the numbers say. Yeah. I I, I think some of the stuff that he calls, I don't get, but I also... I'm I'm not an analytic guy, but I'm pretty damn good at math. I will tell you this. I know that if I make you have to get into the end zone twice, that's got to be more important than than me scoring a touchdown and making you score a touchdown and a field goal later. Like, I, I just feel like... Get it to eight, and that's much safer. Yes, yes. I uh, I thought when I saw it, like when when he took out the kicking team, I thought, "Wow, this is impressive. This is yeah. he's growing up a little bit." Like it's not but I don't that even Kiffin think that's is not growing up. I don't even think that's growing up. I think it was just I a think, smart football play. Yes, right? eight getting it to eight points is a major major deal. Now on the other side of this, going for it on these fourth downs shows his offense that he trusts them and yeah. they are yeah. willing to to run through a brick wall for him because they believe that he believes that they can get that first down every single time. I and don't think that that matters. I just don't. I, I just maybe, don't maybe think it that matters at all. Maybe it doesn't. Like, I know this. All those players want to go for it. They want to well, do yes. it. Well, so, yes. Yes, Matt Corral is a winner. Matt Corral is a warrior god, and Matt Corral wants the ball in his hands at all times. He's the best player in college football. It, that all makes sense, okay? But but that has nothing to do with Lane's trust in them. I, I think they all know that Lane trusts them anyway, so, I, you know, it is what it is. Isaiah Spiller, by the way, 15 carries for 41 yards. A-Chain had 12 carries for 110. I was a little it's, surprised it's, at that. It's only a matter of time before DJ Jerkin gets this defense going. Yeah. I mean, they, and, and I will say this, they got him going yesterday. Had him going yesterday. The two this, interceptions, this, I by the way. You, I will tell you, this is, this is why Lane was number one on my list for wanting to be my coach at LSU. This is, this is why he's number one, this, by the way. This helps him. This helps him very much so. But I, don't, I still don't think it matters because I think the president's going to be too involved in the thing and hit him on Lane. I can, I can, I mean, I get it. I get it. Derek Miller said, uh, I feel Cincinnati is next. SMU win was big. Cincinnati win that game. Cincinnati wins that game. They should be mentioned at least. And then Ghost Talk said Cincinnati might lose their coach. I don't even have the Cincinnati game down, but we'll, we'll hit. We shouldn't. Yeah. We'll hit a few things at the, at the end of the show. Next game on the board here, which, oh, and, and congrats to, to Ole Miss because defense looked great. Got those two interceptions. It completely flipped the game in the, uh, in the fourth quarter. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.